Over the years on my channel, I've tested many portable power stations for manufacturers. This one here is made by Mango. This is one of the higher capacity units I've tested. This one is 3,600 watts. What I'd like to do in this video is show you what I decided to use for my home emergency backup system. So let's head on over to my utility room. And right here you can see the setup that I have. And I can tell you it works fantastic. Let's pan down. We'll take a closer look at all this in a minute. And the battery is an Allied battery. It's for a golf cart. It's a 51.2 volt, 150 amp hour. It was given to me by a friend. There was an issue with it. A lot of these seem to have an issue with the BMS balancing the cells. So I did a manual balance of the cells and it appears to be working much better. It's only been used about two and a half years, and according to the app, it was only cycled about 145 times. The one thing I will say, that Allied battery is made extremely well. You can see what it looks like on the inside right here. I decided on the 5,000 watt Palmister solar inverter charger. The one right here is a single phase. You can get these in split phase. This is only going to supply a 120 volt pure sine wave output. If you want to have 240, you would need two of the split phase units side by side, and then you can have the neutral with each leg 120 volts. And then between the two legs, you can have 240. Now, I really don't care about having 240 volt backup. I could do without the dryer over here. I don't need that. The tankless heater I don't need because I'm in South Florida, so I can get by on the water that's coming out of the faucet. Taking a shower, no big deal. You can see it's charging up the unit right now. I had this all turned off for a while. When it drops to a certain level, it automatically starts charging. What I can say about this unit, not only is it well worth it for the price, it is highly configurable and extremely reliable. In addition to not being able to use the dryer or the tankless heater, I won't be able to use my range. I really don't care about that because I do have a barbecue grill outside. As long as my microwave oven works, toaster oven and toaster, I'm just fine. And the only other thing I won't have is the central AC. Not a big deal. I could take a 5000 BTU window AC unit and place it in the master bedroom to cool me down in the event the power is off for days. This unit also has a UPS or uninterruptible power supply feature. So what that does is you can connect up a whole bunch of circuits after this unit, branch circuits, and then in the event of a power failure, it would automatically switch the power in about 10 milliseconds right over to this inverter in this unit. I'm not gonna be doing that. I just wanna have this ready to supply power to the entire house in the event of a storm or any other outage. The good thing about this setup is that you do not need a permit to have one of these or to install it because it's basically a free standing unit, you can call it. I could just unbolt these screws from the wall. There's only maybe 12, 13 screws. Take the unit away. The battery has rollers on it. Just wheel it out and I could take it to a different location. This is not directly connected to the house electrical system. The way it gets connected, you take this connector right here, dryer connection, dryer plug. For safety, you can see right here is rubber and it's also turned off with that circuit breaker which is below. You can see right over there. That breaker is always off until this is removed and plugged into the dryer receptacle off to the right. With this unit, there are countless settings that you could modify. This does have a built-in charger, and I have it set to allow a maximum of 20 amps to charge the battery. So in the event of a power failure, I can connect up the whole house, have it running. If it's off for a few hours, no big deal, even five, six, seven hours. Once the power comes back on, it'll charge using the AC mains. 
I also have another setup here, down here on the right. That breaker drilled right through the wall is an Anderson connector, waterproof connector, that allows me to plug in a bank of solar panels. I have four 400 watt panels, so I can input up to 1600 watts in this unit in the event the power is out for days. Connect up the panels, and I won't even put a dent in this battery because I use far less than 1600. So the power output is a maximum of 5,000. So on this plug right here, that breaker is 32 amps. Of course, this is 30. That's gonna trip first. And I also added right over here, 12 gauge cord. It's a grounded receptacle. And underneath, I'll show you in a minute, I added a 20 amp pop out breaker that only goes to that plug. So if I need to plug something in, I can plug it directly right from here. In the event of an overload, this will trip. In the event of an overload on this one, that will trip if this does not trip. 25 amp breaker on the input from the solar panels. You can supply up to 500 volts to this unit from the panels. And that is a 200 amp breaker connected to the battery. And you can see there's a 10 gauge wire, goes from this metal housing straight down to the bottom, where I have a clamp on the cold water pipe, took some sandpaper, cleaned off the paint, nice and shiny, put that clamp on there that I made, and now I have a good connection from ground to the unit. As long as you know exactly what you're doing and you're safe, there is no issue with back feeding through the dryer outlet. People have done it for decades using portable generators. Each one of those legs on the plug is going to have 120 volts. The two together is not gonna give you 240. It's just gonna make sure each bus bar in my panel, my breaker panel, is going to have 120, which means everywhere in the house, is going to have 120 volts. TV, lights, fans, my hot tub, my well pump, everything is going to work perfect using this setup. If you take a look on the side, you're going to see there's a breaker. I believe it's a 63 amp. It's way over for what I need. I only use the input power to charge the battery. I do not use it as a feed through through this unit into branch circuits. So you take a look over here. Twelve gauge wire plugged into my washing machine receptacle. I was going to put a dedicated line for this, but it wasn't necessary because I set with the system a maximum of 20 amps input into the battery, and that means it's only pulling a maximum of 1200 watts from this cord. So 1200 from here, this has a maximum of I think 880 watts. So I'm well below 2400 if both are being used at the same time. So not an issue. I was able to share this receptacle with the battery charger. Now I'm going to give you a quick demonstration showing this connected up to the house, powering everything. So what I'm gonna do is take you out to the electrical panel first. Okay, so here is my electrical panel. And you're gonna notice that everything with a red dot that has to go off. So the main breaker at the top, first thing you want off. That's my water heater, don't need it. My air condition, don't need it. Over here is my air compressor, a AC compressor. The range, don't need it. Surge protector right over here. I can leave that off, no big deal. And that is it. So everything is good now. As long as everything marked in red is off, it's now safe to connect the unit. Let's go inside. All right, you see the power's off, the lights are off in here. First thing I wanna do is on the side here, turn this breaker off. Even though the power is off at the receptacle, when the power comes on, I don't want it flowing into the unit. There's no reason to have that connected. Disconnect the plug, place it right here. Now I'm going to take this plug, breaker's off. Take off the protective cover, plug this in right over here. And now all I have to do, 
Turn on that breaker right there and we should be good to go. Power throughout the whole house. So right over here. And you can see immediately the power came back on in this room. I heard the washing machine just clicked. Power there. Now let's go outside. I'll power up my sprinkler system, hot tub, and a few other things, just so you can see that everything is operating off this unit. The GFCI outlet is on. Power out here, great. Now let's turn on the pump. Working good. Now let's head over to the hot tub here. Make sure that works. And let me tell you, if you ever need a hot tub that does not have a heater, that keeps the water at 104 degrees 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for only eight bucks a month, you gotta get one of these. It's incredible. When they say it doesn't work without a heater, they're full of it, it does work. Working great. Computer has power. Remember the pump is going. The lights are going in here too. Fantastic. Just to show you that it works. Let's try the disposal. Refrigerator is on. Working, that's good. Fans working, TV's working, internet, everything works perfect. Power working just fine in the bathroom. And back outside, sprinklers working great. Right here you can see there's a weatherproof Anderson connector for the solar panels. Once I open that up, I take this 40 feet of 10 gauge copper cable. You can see it has MC4 connectors for the solar panel connection. And this end here has the other Anderson connector. It just plugs in very easily. A really great setup. Lay this on the ground. It's weatherproof. And just route this right over to the solar panel. When I'm done using the panels, when power is restored, just unplug it, cover that, and I am good to go. When all four 400 watt solar panels are connected in series, like you see right here, I can expect approximately 160 to 165 volts under load at 10 amps. So it's a lot of power going back to the battery. Once the power comes back on, all you have to do is turn that off, unplug this, put the protective cover back on, it's in the holder. Right, plug this back in. Now you can put this back on. And I'm going to turn on the breaker. When I turn the power back on, you'll see the light in here come on. And this will start charging. You'll see the green light. That's back on. That's on. AC is back on. As long as you do it the way I showed you with the identification marks, you should never have an issue of improperly connecting to the house. And you can see it's now charging since it has AC mains connected to it. Won't take that long to put the power back into that battery because we didn't use it that long. And if I wanted to use this for a prolonged period of time and it was sunny outside, just like I showed you outside, I would have the input from the solar panels around 15, 1600 watts, offsetting my load that I'm using. 
and this would run pretty much all day long. Guys, that's it. I hope you liked this setup. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thank you very much for watching.